Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about cloud formation parameters. With parameters, you can input custom values to your cloud formation template. This video is produced by Cloud Yeti. Cloud Yeti is based in the Washington DC metro area and provides consulting and training services on cloud computing and DevOps. If you want us to provide cloud formation training or any cloud related training, you can contact uh, Cloud Yeti by emailing us at contact at cloudyeti.io. My name is Saurav Sharma and I'll be the presenter for this video. So parameters is an optional section in the cloud formation template that lets you customize your templates. Parameters enable you to input custom values to your template each time you create or update a stack. This is the course repo. Um, we have a lot of other CloudFormation lessons on this repo on GitHub, CloudFormation course. You can find this repo by visiting this link. Now, if you navigate to the lesson 5 parameters, under 5.1, we'll be using this file for this lesson. Let's quickly look at the background. We talked about how parameters are optional section in the CloudFormation template. You can customize your template to your needs with parameters. And we'll see what this means in a bit. Parameters enable you to input custom values to your template each time you create or update a stack. So the objective for this lesson is we'll work with this template. Now, if you click on this link, it will send you to the template that we will be starting with. And we have this template where there's a parameter section. And when you look at this template, you'll see that the resources in this template are an EC2 instance and a security group. And we have two parameters, key name and VPC ID. And when you use this template to create a stack, you should see two boxes on the AWS management console for you to put values into. We want to add one more box for us to input values. And by the end of this lesson, we will have three boxes when we're in the process to create our stack. So let's get started. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you'll see the template that we will be using. So if I click on this template one, once again, you can download this template. Either you can clone the repo or you can also just click on raw and copy everything to a file on your computer, save it. And at that point, we should be in the same page. So once you save this template, I have this saved already um, on my local computer. So once you save this template, let's go to our AWS management console. I'm going to go to cloud formation. I'm going to click on create new stack and I'll choose file. And I'm going to choose EC2 with two parameters. You'll see this in the course repo. EC2 with two parameters. When I open this file, say next, and I get two boxes to input my parameter values. If I were to name this stack EC2 two parameters, I can then choose my key name and I can also choose my VPC ID. So what if I want one more box in here, right? And let's look at our template to actually see what's happening, right? So maybe we can add uh, one more parameters and customize our template even further. So I'm going to go to my template here. Let's quickly scan and see what's happening in the template. There's a couple of parameters in the template. There's an EC2 instance, uh, simple EC2 instance. The instance type of this EC2 instance is going to be T2 micro. It's hard coded. It's a good candidate to be parameterized. And the image ID is also hard coded. So we can make parameters out of these things, right? These are good candidates to make parameters off. So with parameters, we can give the users of this template to choose um, an instance type or choose an image ID instead of hard coding the values and giving them no option. So our goal now is to 
create a parameter that will let us or let any users of this template choose an image ID. So I'm going to edit this template live on this repo. Now instead of hard coding the image ID, what I want to do is I want to create one more parameter. So I'm going to copy one of these parameters VPC ID and I'll just paste. I have to change the name. Two parameters can have the same logical name. This is the logical name of the parameter. So I'm going to say uh, image ID. All right, once I say image ID, I'm going to change the description to say, please enter and image ID you want to use. The type is not going to be this type. The type is just going to be string. Right, the type is going to be string. So I'm letting anyone input any string uh, for parameters. Now, one more thing. We want to also create a default value. So if someone does not want to change the default value, they can just proceed without entering anything. So, you know, just giving them an option to go with a default value. And to do that, we can do something like say default under image ID and enter this image ID that I currently have hard coded, right? Hard code did value will go in the default value. And now I have to do one more thing for me to use this parameter. For me to use this parameter during the stack creation. Right now, this parameter will show up when creating a stack. And whatever value I input does not matter because this parameter is not being used. To use this parameter uh, when the stack is created, to actually make use of this when creating my EC2 instance, what I need to do is go to image ID under resources and EC2 instance. And instead of using the hard coded value, I say ref or refer. Ref means refer to the image ID parameter. So I'll just say image ID. And if you haven't seen uh, this way, of refing, you can also ref, you can also ref this way, but this is also an option, and I like this way of referring uh, in the YAML uh, template. If you haven't started using YAML, then I highly recommend you know you you, you switch from JSON to YAML. I think it's super uh, simple to work with, and you can do things like this. Um, so. Either this or this is fine. Uh, but here what we have done is we have referred to the image ID when we're specifying the image ID for our EC2 instance. Now I'm gonna uh, save this template. And once you save this template, I have a template saved as EC2 with three parameters because we added a parameter. So I have this template now. And I'm gonna use this template to you know, create a stack now. So as you can see, there's only two boxes now under parameters. Now if I go back, I'll choose the template with three parameters now. Next. And here is the image ID box now. Now there's three boxes. And whatever description you put in here shows up in here. So this is the description and this is the default value. See, if I don't want to put a value, then there's a value there by default. So this is the parameter default value, very useful. Um, and still you can, you know, customize this template if you want to change the image ID. Now this image ID only works if you're in the US East region and this image ID is of a uh, Amazon Linux AMI. So uh, if you're in a different region, you can't use this. So this template now lets you choose any AMI. Once I have this, I'm okay with this, this image ID, but I could easily you know, find one of the AMIs that I wanna use and copy one of the AMIs that I wanna use and paste this in the image ID field. But I'm okay with this, so I'm gonna use this. Uh, under key name, I'm gonna choose one of my key name. This is also a parameter. Just to give you an idea why I have a drop down here, if you look at the 
uh, key name parameter. The type is EC2 key pair key name. So this is a uh, type that is um, provided by AWS, which will go and fetch all the key names that you have on your uh, region and give you a drop down option. So that's why you know I have a drop down here for key name, and similarly for VPC ID, I will have a drop down. So let's go back to our stack and. I have a drop down for key name because I only have three keys in, in this region. So I'll choose one of my keys and I also only have one VPC so I have choice of one VPC. I'm gonna say next and next and with the default option I'm gonna create this stack. So the stack will be in progress. If I refresh, the security group is done creating. If I refresh, the EC2 instance is now being created. Let's give this a few more seconds. And the CloudFormation stack is completed, create complete. If I go to my EC2 dashboard and I click on running instance, I can see that there is an instance that is using the AMI that I provided as a default value. So that's right here. And if you had selected another AMI, if you had pasted another AMI uh, in the parameter box, you would have been able to uh, create an EC2 instance with another AMI. So that's the end of this lesson. Once again, don't forget to check this course repo and you know, go through the template and go through the, uh, the lab instructions. And you can do something like this by yourself. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And once again, if you want CloudFormation training, then contact us. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.